Hey guys, Jared back again. So it's been a while since I said I was going to review the MX Android TV box sent to me by FocalPrice.com. Um, and there's a few reasons behind that. One of the most important ones is because I wanted to give it enough time to see if it was good enough to replace my Western Digital Media Player downstairs in the living room. Now, I originally started this off down in the living room to start testing it out and then eventually moved it up into the office. And there's various reasons behind that. But what are they? Well, let's go ahead and start the video and find out. Alrighty, so here we go guys. This is our review of the MX Android TV box running Android 4.2.1. So let's go ahead and get the boring part out of the way, the specs, okay? Uh, like I said, it's running Android 4.2.1. Uh, it's got a dual core 1.5 gigahertz processor. Um, it has one gigabyte of DDR3 RAM. Eight gigabytes is built in storage. It has a USB, uh, four USB slots, uh, as well as um, an a expandable SD card uh, slot. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi, it has uh, HDMI output, it has an, uh, an audio video output, also an optical audio output. Um, it can play pretty much every video format you want, audio format you want. Uh, it comes with a remote control, batteries, and a very, very uh, unhelpful user manual. Now, let's go ahead and jump into my first issue with this particular Android TV box. The remote control. Uh, this remote control is, in my opinion, junk. Uh, so much so that I wasn't even really able to start diving into testing this bad boy out until I purchased one of these. Now, why did I want to purchase one of these, though? Okay, well, let's start with, first and foremost, the most important part, um, navigation. Uh, when you're about any more than maybe five or six feet away, um, distance-wise, this starts to stop working, uh, as they say. So, uh, there's a little cursor button right here. And you press that button and you can start moving, whoops, press it again. And you get your little cursor that pops up and you're gonna be using these little directional buttons around the okay, the center button there to move it around. So if I wanna move it to the right, I move it to the right, move it to the left, up and down. But eventually what happens is um, the cursor will just stop moving like it is there and I'm still actually pressing the button down as you can see and the cursor has stopped moving. Well, as I'm sure you can imagine, that gets extremely frustrating, which is why I said, screw it, I'm getting something with a little trackpad on it. Furthermore, sitting here and trying to pound out, you know, your passwords and login information for Netflix, for Google and so on, becomes extremely frustrating and very, very slow. It takes forever to do that. So, um, and one of the biggest issues I had and what, what sort of really set me off to end up getting this remote control for this TV box was trying to log into Netflix. Um, for some strange reason, I couldn't, this wouldn't allow me to select member login. I just couldn't select it at all until I plugged in the wireless dongle for this in the back of one of the four USB ports of this TV box um, and I was able to use this. And yes, even though I was able to um, click on the cursor button, it just wouldn't let me actually use the OK button to click on the member sign in button within the application itself. But for some reason, this did allow me. I don't know why, it just did. Uh, that said, we're gonna be putting this off to the side. So this was completely useless. So on top of the $80 purchase for the Android TV box, you're gonna be forking out $20 for something cheap like this. And this is the best deal I could find for it. Now I'm posting, I'll be posting a link in the description below uh, if you guys are interested in checking this out for anything. I mean, this is uh, compatible with Windows. This is compatible with Mac. This is compatible with um, Android tablets and phones and all kinds of great stuff. This, this, this is very useful. I'm actually glad I purchased this even after I stop using this uh, in the near future or right after this video, I should say. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump into the settings menu here. Uh, like I said, running stock Android 4.2.1. Um, what led me to believe that this actually had Bluetooth was the fact that it has a menu option here. Clicking on it, but you'll notice it says to see devices turn on Bluetooth. Well, there is no toggle to turn Bluetooth on. We can go up to the menu options here, the overflow, and it says show received files, which also gives me an indication that perhaps this can receive uh, a blue or has a Bluetooth chip in it, but it actually doesn't. Um, believe me, I've done enough testing and research recently to find that the, no, this doesn't have Bluetooth. Um, moving down into display here, pretty limited settings. So you do have the option to change your wallpaper if you want. Um, various other settings in here that I've used once and will never use again. Display position is obviously very important if you're plugging this from, say for instance, a monitor to, to uh, a big screen TV, you're obviously gonna need to um, uh, change around and stretch and things like that. You guys know what I'm talking about. Wireless display on if you ever need to use it. Like I said, comes with eight gigabytes of built-in storage. 
uh, location access data you know quite limited in here obviously we don't have GPS but you know obviously it'll, it'll use your Wi-Fi so um, you don't really need GPS on a TV box I would imagine uh, moving down here and we can go all the way down to uh, about media box uh, one thing before we go there we'll jump into de developer options here and I'm gonna scroll down whoops I'm gonna scroll on down to all of the um, animations you'll notice I actually have all of the animation scales turned completely off to speed things up um, the reason why I ended up doing that is actually because upon first launch or setting up of the Android TV box it's going to give you the option to choose between the stock Android launcher or the proprietary 3d launcher they give you which actually bogs down the system beyond belief and is actually quite cartoonish in my uh, personal opinion now you can if you want to run Nova launcher and things like that although for some reason even though I set it as my um, uh, my primary launcher uh, whenever I went to say for instance the application try or even launch an application and backed out to the desktop uh, I kept asking me over and over and over again to select a launcher so basically I found that either picking the stock Android launcher that it comes with or the 3d launcher it worked just fine so I kept it stock Android launcher uh, that said we'll go ahead and move on down to about media box uh, as you can see MBX reference board blah 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 Android 4.2.1 that's great so we have system updates great well I happen to know that this particular box the, the manufacturer that makes this particular box um, has another box the exact same thing exact same specs pretty much uh, except that it's running Android 4.2.2 well where's our system updates? so you'll notice that I've actually checked August 12th which is today go ahead and check again but there's nothing so we go back to the home screen and we go to the application tray and you'll notice we've got a little application that says upgrade so my first thought was oh okay so that's the way the company wants to update uh, the software so we click on update and we're presented with either local upgrade so I'm assuming you can which I've tested we'll get to that in just a moment uh, you can download the actual firmware update load it onto the SD card put it in the SD card slot power off to the device um, poke a like a toothpick into the hole into the, a hole on the back and then um, you let it restart with the SD card in it and it's supposed to start the update process which I did and it failed miserably and it was quite the easy steps but it just didn't work so we come here and we go okay network upgrade so we click on network upgrade and connect to server fail so what does that tell me well it tells me that the manufacturer of this particular Android TV box is not at all interested in further software um, support so that was really disappointing to see so and generally um, my consensus is if the manufacturer doesn't plan on supporting a product for a little while after they release it um, I don't want to put my money in there uh, jump back into the application menu here we do have a camera I haven't tested it why because I'm not interested in running Skype or my video chats with my friends um, via an Android TV box when I have my computer or my smartphone which has a higher resolution and I, I just prefer uh, I just prefer that that way um, it does play movies and music and everything just fine but there's an uh, there's an issue with the movies now I'll jump into Netflix just so we have something to look at here but I'm not actually gonna play anything so I don't get copyright flag thank you YouTube and Viacom for that um, there's an issue here now this was originally living in my living room and then I ended up bringing it upstairs I would put it in my living room to see if it would uh, replace my Western digital uh, media player and it hasn't and the biggest most important reason why is because playing movies back it doesn't matter what definition it's in um, certain scenes will have this really strange green overwhelmingly green maybe orange sometimes blue hue to the images and that becomes really 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 frustrating especially when you know it's not supposed to be there so I ended up testing it out I played it both on Netflix and it happened on Netflix I also it also happened on uh, movies that I would load onto an SD card to play it locally it happened there as well so I came to the conclusion that it's either the software that sucks or it's a really shitty quality HDMI out port uh, HDMI out port I'm sorry um, so that was really disappointing so that I ended up you know double checking took the movies put it on my uh, Western digital media player and it they played just fine they looked gorgeous uh, so this is probably one of the main reasons why people are gonna purchase an Android TV box is to watch Netflix to watch YouTube is to watch videos and so on and if it can't if it's not capable of doing that well is it really worth your money probably not right so you know that said can I recommend this to people to buy this isn't something that I can put my name behind no 
Uh, you know, I can put my name behind a lot of products that I review sometimes. Hell, I could even put my name behind this cool little cheap um, wireless keyboard here with a trackpad on it. But can I put my name on the MX Android TV box? Uh, unfortunately, no. Um, $80 for the TV box, $20 for the remote control. You're up to $100. You may as well just take your money, spend an extra couple of bucks, get yourself an actual Google TV box um, by a reputable manufacturer like Sony or many of the others out there. Um, or just go get yourself a Western Digital TV box or one of those Roku's that would just work just fine. The companies still support their products. We know that there's updates coming and there's lots of different communities out there and forums out there for you to check up on and see if there's any tips and tricks and things like that. There really isn't anything I can show you with, uh, with this one. You know, we do have all of our standard applications. So if you're wanting something very simplistic that has limited functionality um, because of the limited internal specifications, this might be something for you, I suppose. I mean, I'm going to try and give you an unbiased review here, right? An unbiased opinion. I mean, obviously, if you wanted to show your gallery and check out pictures with your friends, uh, you know, you've got the option there. Um, if you wanted to watch movies, you've got the option there, but don't expect it to be, you know, good quality or anything because of those um, strange issues that I was experiencing before, like I mentioned. Uh, we do have a file browser, okay? So, and this is what the file, file browser looks like, in my opinion. It's actually quite um, iOS looking. Uh, it, it, Overall, guys, I just I just don't like it. It just seems like um, there wasn't a whole lot of thought put into this. I mean, it is from China. We all know that you know there's a lot of these different uh, various Android devices, tablets, smartphones, and of course Android TV boxes that are coming out of China. Um, some of them are cool and they're great and they're a great you know bang for your buck. And some of them, in my opinion, are perhaps just uh, you know an unfortunate waste of money. And I and I and I hate to say this um, because Focal Price did send this to me, but I'm here to keep it real with you guys. Um, I don't. I, th I think this is one of those products that's just a waste of money and a waste of your time to look into. Personally, um, I haven't really heard many great things about this. Um, that said, guys, I think we'll go ahead and end this here. Uh, there really isn't anything else for me to tell you other than I just I'm not convinced by this and I can't stand behind it. I can't put my name behind this product and say go get this. It's worth it. Uh, anyways, guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you liked my you know honest opinion of this thing. You know, not every company is going to make great products out there. Uh, and some products are hit or miss and some of them are kind of a diamond in the rough. Unfortunately, this is not one of those diamonds in the rough. This is a rough rock amongst other rough rocks. <laughs> That's it though, guys. Thanks for watching. Click that likes button down below if you appreciate my true um, honest opinion. And uh, if you're new to the channel, subscribe for more videos in the future like this one. And that's basically it. We'll see you in the next one, guys. Cheers.